All right, so I've just started doing this intro for you guys watching after the fact <clears throat> on um, IGTV and YouTube. What's up, Max? What's up, guys? Just a second. Um, Jonathan Garcia, or Jag Performance, is going to join me. We're going to talk about his experience at a professional soccer combine, um, specifically AX Pro Soccer Combine. <clears throat> and he'll be joining in just a minute. So while y'all are watching, just whatever questions you have, it's about what we're talking about. Um, you know, we'll, we'll try to answer it as we go and just start a good conversation, see where it goes. All right, so he's about to join. <coughs> All right, just slowly. Good, Josh. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we're good. What's up, man? Not much. What about you? I um just got back from a grocery store run, man. I had some time, you know. About earlier, we uh we mixed up the times, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, my bad on that. But... Nah, it's all good. It's all good. Um, how's your training been going? Pretty good. Just trying to get some sessions in with other people when I can, but looks like for the most part, I might just be by myself this winter break. What about you? Uh, so today I actually um, had like an 11 v 11 game with uh, this league that I'm a part of. It's kind of like a Sunday league. Um, we just had like a – so the, uh, we're doing um, basically we're going to have like a select team from like everybody that plays. And we're going to travel to um, South Florida for a tournament in January. So it should be pretty good, you know, some good competition and whatnot. But um, that was my first time playing like in two weeks, man. I've been uh, doing some rehab on my knee and whatnot. I had a small little injury, but I'm all good now and had a good game. Or, excuse me, a good game today. So, yeah, man, just uh, happy to be back on the field. Yeah, it's good, man. I miss um, scrimmaging and stuff like it was with my team. Mm -hmm. So you're uh, <laughs> you're going to be home for the rest of the year pretty much, right? Um, Well, until January 20th or so, if all goes according to plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. perfect. So uh, let's get into it, man. Yeah, all right, guys. So this is Jonathan Garcia. This counts Jack performance, and like I said, today we're going to talk about the experience at Pro Soccer Combine, specifically AX Soccer Tours. So <clears throat> we're just going to go through, you know, preparation for the details about it, the schedule and stuff when he was there, and then, you know, the aftermath and his advice for you guys that are looking into going to Pro Soccer Combines. Um, and, yeah, so I'll let you introduce yourself a little bit better, too. Yeah, perfect. Um, so, uh First, thank you, Josh, you know, for, uh, you know, reconnecting through social media and whatnot. It's just been, you know, you know, it's cool to meet people that are like-minded in the sport and wanting to get better and just having that kind of positivity around you, even though through social media, it brings a lot of value to me. So, um, you know, thanks to you, man, for your content and everything. And um, to get into a little bit about me. Uh, so, guys, as, um, as Josh mentioned, my name is Jonathan Garcia. I'm uh, currently 21 years old. I'm attending Florida State University. Uh, long story short, um, I decided not to play college soccer due to, excuse me, due to a lot of reasoning, reasonings, and that led to me um, kind of figuring things out in life, and that kind of, um, you know, instead of playing, I actually ended up coaching for about a year, two years, and through that, I realized how much I love this sport and how much I miss playing, and then, um, fortunately, I was able to meet one of my mentors uh, currently, a guy named Danny Cruz, who um, runs that adult league that I told you about earlier. And um, I started training with him, doing, like, private sessions and just getting back into the sport. I was always a really good player. And that's not to be uh, braggadocious or say, you know, oh, I'm, a, I'm a really good player. But um, I am confident in my ability to this day. And um, after doing lots of training sessions, just getting back into it, getting back into shape, I just kept getting that love for the game and just staying committed to the sport of, um, you know, really just the grind of, like, every day or, you know, six days out of the week, having one rest day of just, trying to get better, pushing myself, going to the weight room, going to, uh, you know, to the training fields by myself or with my mentor, um, doing all that work, just, uh, just kind of slowly started like, you know, working out what did I want to do with soccer? And that took a long time. So after about maybe a year and a half of doing that and just staying consistent with it, I, I, I came to realize, all right, how can I bring more value to um, not just myself, but to others, because I realized how much of a passion I have for like helping people. So I saw, you know, through various YouTube videos, various uh, YouTubers that make content soccer wise, I really saw how like, 
what they did was like really impactful and it even impact me. It influenced me to um, want to do what I'm doing right now, which is, um, you know, just making content, just talking about the sport, talking about our experiences, showing what we do now that, um, that in the long run, hopefully those things, that, those little small details that we do can uh, build up to something. I think there's a lot of, excuse me, a lot of value in just um, showing those things. So I started making content back in, um, I believe, August, like very beginning of August. I started, I created Jack Performance, and it's just been really awesome to see, like, you know, again, Josh, we spoke about this off off, uh, off the live that it's really cool to meet people that are, you know, doing the same thing as you, you know, just making content and, you know, just, it's not even about, you know, trying to get the most followers, the most likes, or whatever it is, it's really just about, you know, during my free time, I enjoy making content because I know that there's other guys, for instance, um, you know, if you were 15 years old, if I was 15 years again, 15 years old again i would i would have loved to have somebody that was like you know like us now you know we're making content we're saying hey if you want to go play college soccer this is what you need to do if you want to um become a better player uh you need to work on your week play you need to you need to have everything that um that comes as a soccer player you need to have all of that you know i would say mastered as far as fundamentals and little things like that i really think that you know as technology has innovated has given us you know you and i the chance to um have this conversation live with other people that are here so that we're all able to uh, learn off of one each other's experiences and take those into our um, our future. So um, it's a little bit long, sorry guys, but um, that's kind of a quick little summary of what I'm about. And uh, I actually just recently came back from uh, the Egg Soccer Tour, which is a pretty popular combine for all you know guys that are wanting to play pro. I went to that in, uh, I believe it was November, early November. So it's been about a little more than a month, month and a half that I went. And uh, yeah, Josh, you wanna ask some questions about that? We can definitely do that. Yeah, so thanks for introducing yourself. Thanks for joining and doing this with me because something I don't have experience in yet. So it's good to hear someone that's actually been there. So um, first of all, just how did you find out about AX Soccer Tours and also just kind of figuring out which pro soccer combines or things like that you wanted to go to before okay. you ever went? Okay, so before even going into the combine, because I want everybody to understand like, the process of, hey, I'm going to sign up for a combine. There's a lot of work to it prior, obviously. And um, I think having that mental preparation is huge because you go into this combine with like over 100 guys and it's like, it's just you on your own. And you're like, all right, you know, I need to show up. I need to, you know, play play my game. I need to be confident in myself. I can't back up from tackles. I need to be, you know, at the peak, at your peak level, peak performance. So um, even even before I started looking for um, combines to go to, this this whole year has been, you know, quite crazy for everyone. So I knew that going into um, the fall, <clears throat> excuse me, I knew that there'd be some opportunity as far as um, exposure. So I what I did, you know, going into quarantine, I just worked my tail off. I, I made sure that you know at least four or five days out of the week I was doing something to help you know the future version of myself to get ready for something because. That's the that's the that's the problem with uh, with a lot of guys is that, you know, sometimes you don't know what's what's coming next. You tend to have that want to just switch off, like ah, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna have a tryout in a month or two. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna hang out today. I'm not gonna train today. And that one little day really is like the difference in these combines. You know, there's guys that are you doing the same thing as you and I. You know, they're training every day. They're trying to get themselves ready for um these kinds of events. So. To come across, talk to you about how I came across the um, AX Soccer Tour. So I watched a YouTube video of um, Spencer Muller. Uh, I'm sure, like, guys that are watching know who that is. Um, mm -hmm. I saw, like, I don't know. It was just, like, I was just, I was just scrolling on YouTube, man. And um, I ended up seeing his video about the AX Soccer Tour. And I was like, all right, this looks, this looks dope. This looks competitive. Let me look into it more. And then um, after that video, man, it's crazy how the algorithm works. I got an ad from, like, AX Soccer saying, like, you know, hey, we're coming to Florida. And I was like, all right, let me check it out. Did my research. I spent like two days doing research. Just like little things, just seeing their website, um, looking at that Spencer Miller video, just reading the comments, little things like that. And then after all that, I said, okay. Um, I looked at my expenses one night. Hey, can I afford to go this? Is it going to be worth the money? And I came to the conclusion, Josh, that, you know, again, I go back to what I said. This year has been been crazy. There was There's opportunity right now, even right now, where like, Guys like you that usually have a whole fall season of more than 10 plus games, they didn't get that chance. So I was like, all right, I'm someone that isn't playing college soccer, but I am training. I am involved in the sport a ton. And I'm also making content. You know, it, it felt like the right fit. It felt like the right time. I was ready mentally. I was ready physically. 
So I said, all right, let me sign up. Let me, uh, let me go to, let me go to this. It was only four and a half hours away from, uh, from where I stay, which is uh, Tallahassee, Florida. And yeah, man, I took the, took the chance for it and I went. Yeah, man. Yeah. I remember when I first heard about AX soccer tours too, like I've seen quite a few ads and then I remember Spencer Muller and Matt Sheldon talking about their experiences as well. And now, yeah, the algorithm and stuff almost every time I'm on Instagram, yeah, yeah, some kind of agency or pro combine advertised for me. So, um, when it came to getting ready, once you knew, like, I'm going to this, this is happening, how did you prepare? Like, did you give yourself a certain amount of time beforehand, or you know, and how much training you do? What went into your preparation, like mentally and physically, for that? Okay, so the combine was November third, fourth, fifth, if I remember, and I signed up, man. To be honest with you, I think like maybe like a week and a half, two weeks before, so I didn't have too much time to prepare. But I go back to what I said. I um, I was already trained. I was already, you know. Yeah. Again, I go back to um, you know, you have to train even though you don't know what's coming, because you don't know when these opportunities come. You know, I didn't know that. Hey, you know, there's gonna be an AX soccer tour on November third, fourth, fifth. I didn't know that six months ago. I, I had no clue. But through the preparation of my own and also having a, pr a private trainer, I, um, that, that, that was my preparation, really. The two weeks prior was really more so just fit, uh, excuse me, mentally. Um, I was taking a lot of I – was, I was taking rehab more serious, you know, just making sure that I was stretching properly after every session, foam rolling every day, little things like that, just trying to have consistency of um, just making sure that my body is, uh, you know, ready to go. So that was really all the preparation. Um, and I think mentally is huge, man, just because it really is all about your confidence and what you want to, um, you know, once you go into that environment, it's like, Hey, I'm here. I need to, I need, I need to, I need to play my game and do what I can. So that, that, that's basically the preparation for it. Yeah. Um, we just got a question real quick. Um, sports by the way, thanks for joining, man. Appreciate you. He said, um, do you play professionally? Do I play professionally? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so as the people that are here. Um, so I didn't play college soccer guys. I ended up uh, deciding to, um, you know, just not play because of lots of reasonings that I'll get into in the future. And with not me not playing, I'm, I realized how much I love the sport by just uh, living everyday life and trying to accommodate and fit into different things that weren't, you know, who was, was who I was. And then I started training players and then I, I started getting involved in organizations and um, through that, I realized that I wanted to play again. And I decided to, um, you know, basically really just just this, this year, excuse me. Um, I, I'm at FSU, Florida State University. We have a men's club team. I didn't get the tryout this year because I was actually at the Combine, the AX Soccer Tour. So um, hopefully going into January, I'll be on that team. And I'm also actually, um, I actually recently just got called up to go on, on, a, on preseason with a, with a uh, semi-pro team locally. So. We'll see how that goes, and um, that, that's really my situation right now as far as playing. <clears throat> All right, so um, back to the soccer combine. I think you made a good point because, you know, obviously it can be extra motivation. We have camps or things coming up. So I remember, like, the summer before my senior year, I had one, which is a big camp, and there's going to be a ton of colleges going. So it was, like, a bit extra motivation because I knew all the way from, from like, um, February – but that's where I was going. So mm -hmm. um, I used that some extra motivation those six months or whatever it was, something like that, <laughs> before the camp. But um, I also think, like, you should be training no matter what. I think a lot of people um, just kind of using the pandemic as an excuse sometimes of I'm out of shape or this or that. And in a lot of ways, there's more opportunities now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It gets harder. It's more tricky. But I think that's a good – you know, really good point for any player. Like, you can use some extra motivation, and it is a bit different than just other types of things. But you should always be in shape. You should always be training the same amount. You know, paying attention to your body, doing those things is key if you really want to succeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one hundred percent. All right. So, um, next question was: It's like you said, you're just preparing. You're already in shape. You're already there, pretty much, which you should be. So, when you got to the combine. Um, I mean, just take us through the experience, the schedule, who you met, you know, where you sprinting, practicing, like, just take us through the whole experience. Really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, basically, 
it started on what was it? I think it was Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm not mistaken. So yeah. So Tuesday morning is when we started. The way that AX Soccer Tour does like the whole combine is that they break up uh, all the guys into three different groups. So I was in group two, I believe, which started around noon. And you had to get there 30 minutes before. And I checked in, you know, just got my training jersey. Everyone has like a number on the back. Pretty simple stuff. Usual, usual stuff for like any kind of tryout. And then um, you show up. There's a, the first group training. So the first day is really just a training day. All we really did was a lot of technical stuff, uh, working on, you know, possession games, uh, working towards like small sided, going towards small goals, little things like that. But the first day was really good for me, man, as far as um, getting comfortable. I think that that's a good thing that the AX Arc Tour uh, Combine does is that they give you that first day of like, hey, like we're going to just train and uh, get to meet, you know, the people that are around you, get to meet the coaches and just, you know, get comfortable. Because obviously there's some guys that are flying out from like different states. There's guys that are driving, you know, guys like myself that drove like five, six hours, five, it was five hours. And, you know, you might have a little bit of heavy legs. So I think the first day was really good to get like, you know, just get out there, meet some people. And that's kind of like the first point I wanted to touch on, Josh, for like the guys that are watching is that your first day you go there is to me one of the most important ones because that's where you really get to set yourself as far as um, how can I distinguish myself from the rest? You get to see the level pretty, pretty fast of like, hey, who can play? Who has a good touch? Who doesn't have a good touch? Is this, is everybody here, you know, at a, at a high level? And for me, I, I came to realize pretty quickly, like, um, everyone was, you know, 100%, 100%, you know, everyone's trying to give it their all. But at the same time, there was a lack of communication within my group at that time. So, Josh, you obviously don't know me very well, but um, I'm, a, I'm a good communicator on the field when it comes to, um, you know, I play as a six sometimes, I play as a left back. And you'll always hear me on the field, just constantly communicating, but not just yelling, just to yell. It's giving out good communication. Hey, you know, man, you know, check your shoulder. Hey, um, you know, whatever it is, just calling out good things. But another good value here, guys, for you guys to take away from uh, any any first day of combine is just getting in, getting to know guys. Like that's the very first thing that I did. As soon as I got on the field to warm up, I did my own warm up for like five minutes. And then um, I saw a guy juggling the ball, went up to him, said, hey, man, you know, I'm Jonathan, you know, um, what's your name, you know? Just, just getting to know someone. Pretty simple. I got to know like two guys before we started, um, got their names down. And then as the combine went on, I, I made sure I knew mostly everybody in my group's name, which is like something that's quite hard sometimes, Josh, but it, it's, it's really important. Like for instance, if you know your whole back four, your back, your back four, you're one of the center backs. If you know the left back, the center back and the right back's name, it makes everything so much easier. You can't just go, Hey, 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 Hey. It's like, if you call someone's name out, they're going to immediately look at you. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that was the first day, really, of just, like, getting to know everybody, getting names down. Uh, coaches, obviously, I, I introduced myself to uh, one of the coaches, and I made it clear that, hey, like, I'm communicating. I'm here to play. I'm, you know, just, you know, it wasn't anything exaggerated, but it was enough for me, in my opinion, to say, you know, give off the coaches the, the vibe of, hey, this guy is a good communicator. He's good on the ball. He's simple, you know, He's one of the few guys that is talking the most, you know, and that already helps you distinguish yourself. Yeah, that's a great point. And someone in the chat brought up to making good first impression. It's always mm -hmm. key. And I like how you brought up like introducing yourself. I just made a video yesterday about um, you know, building connections and it's, you know, there are some parts about it where it's not so simple, but really a lot of it just comes down to just getting over yourself, getting over your nerves, go up and introduce yourself to people get to know people, ask questions, like <clears throat> build those relationships, do it for the right reasons. Don't just do it because you're like, oh, this guy can get me a trial or on this team, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, just go out there, put yourself out there. You can make connections. You never know who knows who. <clears throat> um, yeah, so that was no, how exactly. the first day went pretty much. Yeah, and I just want to touch on one last thing before we go on to the second day and third day, really, because the second and third day is kind of the same, but what was I going to say? I can't remember. It's really like, I felt like I was the one of the few guys that was trying to communicate with guys off the field. And I feel like, and Josh, I think you know this already, where the guys that you meet at these combines are guys that are going to possibly help you in your future, you know? Because there's guys from all over the place. I met a guy from Boston, New Jersey, uh, South Florida, and locally in the, in the city that we were in, of Sarasota. I met like five or six guys that are like from completely different places in the country. But... I don't know four years from now, two years from now, you know, six months from now, maybe I run into them again. Maybe we go to the same crowd again. 
whatever it is, if I build that connection now, I know that in the future, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pay out in some way, in some way. So that, that's my, uh, my one thing for anyone that goes to any combine is just get to know people. Yeah, I think that's, it can really be a waste. Even just like ex like enjoying it because I know some of the camps I went to, nothing really came out of the few college camps I came to because my school I played for wasn't at wasn't at there. It didn't affect that really, but mm -hmm. just for the experience's sake, like meet people, get to know them, <clears throat> like you're kind of just like that's one of the biggest things about especially when you're trying to play professionally. The connections come even more important, and that's one of the biggest things why. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a waste just because you didn't get a, a a contract offer from a camp. Well, you got the experience, you got to see what it's like, you got to meet people, and if you took advantage mm -hmm. of it, it's a great learning experience. So exactly. some people think, oh, I just wasted all this money for a camp, but a lot of times it's what you make out of it. Some of those things are out of your control of getting a contract offer, a spot on the team, or a college coming after you, but what is in your control, like meeting people, giving your full effort, <clears throat> playing your hardest, and you can make the experience worth it doing those. Exactly, things. exactly. Put in great words though. And someone else asked a question, what level are you guys playing at? I'm playing Division three college soccer right now. I'm a sophomore in college. And um, like Jonathan said, playing, um, trying to make it on the men's club for FSU, Florida State D1, and playing with the adult league right now too. And about to go in preseason the semi-pro team locally so um you know that said how did how did the second day go was there much different and you know, what'd you guys do mm -hmm. so the second day was really just you know that's really where like it starts as far as um i guess you could say where the coaches are really trying to scout people what uh what we did was just simple warm-up as always um we broke off into 11 v 11s and uh, you had your team with a single coach. And each coach, uh, these guys were like coaches that are coaching at like USL Championship, uh, USL League One, like MLS experience. So these are guys that are like, you know, high quality coaches. So that was really cool. That was the first thing that I got out of like, you know, that day. I was like, all right, these coaches like know what they're talking about. I'm just going to, I'm going to absorb everything that they're telling me. Because if I don't right now, if I don't shut up and just listen at halftime or, you know, whatever it is, I'm not going to get the benefits out of having an hour and a half with them, you know? So going into the, first, excuse me, the second day, so as I said, we had 11 v 11s. Uh, starting 11 came out. I was playing left back. And um, what's funny about the whole combine and really just everything is that guys are really picky about where they want to play. And um, it's kind of funny because, like, you'll have, you'll have, like, you know, eight, not eight, but, like, you know, six or five midfielders, center mids. But you'll have, like, two center backs or mm -hmm. one center back. So that was our problem with my team at first is that we only had like one center back and I usually play as a center mid. I can play as a left back, left mid. I'm a versatile as far as uh, playing. So I was like, stick me at the back. I'll play, I'll play left back. You know, I don't mind, you know, it's, it's a good position. So I played left back and one of the center mids ended up being my center back. And that was, um, that was interesting. That's all. I'll, I'll say that, that it was a bit difficult because, uh, it's just got it's just you know that's the one thing that i think there's, there's a lot of value in as far as uh if you're a player trying to go to these combines if you can adapt to any position say hey coach um you need me a center back i got you i'm right there center back right there boom put in a shift put in a hell of a shift even if you don't play center back just work your ass off play simple call for the ball good communication little things like that that's what's going to bring out you know that's what's going to show to the coach hey this guy doesn't even play center back but i can put him there and he can do a shift let me transition him into midfield let me see what he does let me see if he can play his position now. And then once you perform as a center mid as well, that's when the coaches are like, all right, this guy, this guy's clicking, this guy's moving. Let me, let me get his name down. Let me talk to him after, the, after today. So um, back into my experience as far as the game, uh, we did a 90-minute game. I played the first four, like 65 minutes, and then um, I got a sub. Um, as far as my performance, I thought I played pretty well. The other team was pretty good. A couple guys that were on that team were playing like D one, like in like in Florida. So they had they had some good players. Um, really, I can't remember too much. All, all I all I really remember is that as a left back, and this is just you know keeps it nice and short. As a left back, it, it's really important that you um not only you track your man as you're you know as you're defending, but can you be an option going forward? Can you get the ball up and high in the field and you know whip in a good cross or drive out at fullback at the opposite uh, excuse me the other team's fullback and give that ball to your left mid. Just creating options as a, as a fullback. 
and um, I, I, I myself do a pretty decent job of that. So I did that. I did. A, I had a great game. I guess you could. I guess you could say. And then um, that was it. I only played 65 minutes. I rested for the rest. I was um, I was pretty tired, man. To be honest, with you. the coach asked me to go back in like in the last 10 minutes. And then um, there was like we were we were down like 4-0, and I told the coach like I felt pretty tight in my calves, which I did. And that and that comes from like you know not spending five months five, four months not playing 11 v 11, you know what I mean? So like the fatigue came pretty quick, Josh. And also the day before was pretty intense. So I felt really tight in my legs. I didn't want to risk it going into uh, the third day. So I told the coach, hey, I'm just gonna, you know, rest and, you know, be ready for the third day. So that was that, that was day two. I think we lost like four, two, four, one around there. But um, again, I said, what I said earlier, we had a center mid playing center back. So mm -hmm. you, you do what you can, right? Yeah, that's a great point. His whether you're at a combat or not, coaches want to see, you know, you're willing to sacrifice for the team and you're not going to be, you know, a diva or like, oh, I have to play wing or forward. Like, mm -hmm. obviously we all have our own roles, but um, yeah, I can just say college soccer, like the whole, the whole off season in preparation after I signed going into my freshman year, I was like, I'm going to be playing fullback. And I was working on, I mean, I still always work on overall things of, crossing long balls defending like I try to work on it all but mm -hmm. I was also like in my mind just I'm gonna be fullback I'm gonna be you know take people on 1v1 go up and put crosses in be an option on offense and be solid on defense and then you know a week or two in the preseason and my coaches never were like oh yeah we think you could be center back like I didn't get really a <laughs> I, I played center back before then but you know like one or two weeks in they're like you're center back. You're tall. You're big. We got fullbacks. They're good. Like we want you at center back, and it hasn't changed since then. And you know you could take that. Oh, and I don't know how to play this position. I don't like this. Or mm -hmm. I'm, I'm better here. I like it better here. And it's still I like fullback. There are guys that like that, man. Yeah, I still like fullback better. It's my favorite. But you also need to understand like your role on the team, your strengths. Some of the things are just born with you. Just taller, bigger, slower, faster, whatever it may be. Exactly. and combine on a team wherever you are like that's one of the key things like be versatile be good at everything obviously have your strengths work on your weaknesses mm -hmm. but always be willing because that goes a long way to showing your attitude to those yeah players. it shows it shows so much character and that's what like coaches are looking for as long as i think that you know for anybody that is uh trying to play at a high level i think the very first thing, Josh, and I'm sure, you, I'm sure you noticed this since we started playing college, is this. If you have a really good first touch and you can just receive that ball, play it to your center mid, play it to your fullback, and just move that ball properly, that in itself, and being able to adapt to whatever situation you're given, that really already sets you miles away from lots of guys because, I mean, that, that's all it is. It's just fundamentals, and that's why, like, anytime I train or if I'm training players because I'm also um, – I also do train players on the side um, – I just do simple stuff, man, just the simple stuff. And sometimes it might be a little boring, but I, I make it fun in whatever way. You have to make those situations. Can you make it game scenario? Can you, you know, build – imagine yourself, you know, hey, I am playing this long ball into my fullback. You know, even if it's going to nobody, it's going to, you know, a cone. Just envision it and just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. When you get those situations – excuse me, when you get in the situation of the game, you're going to be able to hit those balls like nothing. Yeah. Um, and thank you, Jose, if you're still here for that comment. Appreciate that, man. All right, so at this point, you're heading into day three. Um, stick us through that final day, and you know if you got to meet the coaches personally, and how that interaction was, on top of you know obviously the drills and training that you did that day. How are you feeling? Okay, so I want to touch on something that I did that was a mistake, like a big mistake. Looking back at it now, on that day, um, and that's it, it's a simple it's a simple thing, Josh. You're probably gonna laugh, but it's just showing up on time. I, um, they, we had, so there's the way, so let me, let me comment on this. The way they, um, they do it is again, I said, there's three groups, right? Three different days. They mix the groups, um, not every day, but actually they do every day. So the third day I was on group two, the whole three days. So group two played at, I think 1030 or 11, 11, we had to be there at 1030. So they say be there at 10.30. So on the third day, I was like, all right, we start at 11, but it's 10.30. So I was like, be there at 10.30, but we start at 11. So I had to, man, Josh, I got to tell you, man, I woke up that day with, like, the tightest cats, so tight. 
my calves were killing me. And I was just like, man, I, I, I don't know, like, what I'm going to do. Like, I need to play. I have to push through it. Like, I got up. I had my breakfast. And then um, I actually ended up going to Walgreens really fast to grab, like, some pain relief pills, man. Because I was like, I don't take those. I usually just do Icy Hot. But I knew that. I knew that Icy Hot wasn't going to do it that day. So I just took some pain relief pills, got on the road, and got there around, um, like, 10.50, 10.45. And I was like, all right, I'm good. You know, we're going to, um, you know, we started at 11. You know, 11 means, I thought 11 meant we're going to warm up at 11, which we did the day before. But I get there, and the whole team is already warming up. I'm like, shit, I don't even have my cleats on. I don't even have my socks on. So even though the coaches really didn't look at that because there was a game going on and one, only one coach was warming us up, um, and I think I've done this now today with my life, is that, you know, showing up on time for anything, whether well, if it's work, school, your job, whatever it is, that, that's a great habit to just instill into your life. because it, sh it just shows so much. You know, if you get there 30 minutes before, you get to watch the guys that you might compete with in the future play for mm -hmm. 10, 15 minutes. You get your cleats on. You're all relaxed. You're all good to go. And then uh, you get straight into it. So I got there a little late. It, was, um, it, was, it wasn't a big deal, but to me now, it's a big deal. You know, it's just me, uh, I guess you could say, like, judging myself. So even though, like, maybe nobody cared, I cared, you know, in that moment, like, fuck. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm late. So as, um, as, as the combine went on into, um, into that game, so we had one last game, um, that, that ended up going pretty well. We, um, we actually won that game, I believe, like, 5-4. It was a pretty close game. And then um, the game in itself was pretty good. The first half was pretty solid. But then going into the second half, guys, uh, a couple guys on my team cramped up. And then some guy on the other team cramped up. And I go back to, like, the very beginning thing. Excuse me, the very beginning of what I said as far as everything is, like, this year is an opportunity. Like, guys aren't training. There's a lot of guys that are, like, slowly still getting their way back into the game. So that that in itself, you know, not, not seeing guys cramp up shows you, like, hey, like, a lot of people still aren't ready. So it's – um. <laughs> Reading that comment, man. <laughs> so it was, um, it was funny. It, it was funny seeing guys cramp up. But I made it through, man. I was, I was exhausted, Josh, to be honest with you. But I made it through. Uh, played the whole game, and then um, afterwards. So I didn't mention this earlier, but day two, I actually spoke to some coaches already, and the coaches are really like open to like talking to them. They just sit on the sidelines or you know have their notebooks and whatnot. And um, I spoke to two coaches. I spoke to a coach that was from El Salvador. It's like a Division One team, professional team there. And um, for you guys that don't know, I'm actually a half Salvadorian. My mom's from El Salvador, and I've been there and whatnot. So I had that kind of small connection. Even though it's not a connection, it's like, I'm Salvadorian. You're from El Salvador. You know, I can have a conversation with you. And then I had that conversation for like 10 to 15 minutes. He told me, come tomorrow after the game. We'll talk. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. And then um, afterwards, I spoke to him for about a good – 15, 20 minutes and really just got to know him personally. And I asked him questions about, you know, what's, what's soccer like in El Salvador, you know, what's the standards, you know, how's housing work? How does the, you know, visa stuff work? And I got a lot of information from him. I got his contact information afterwards. And then right after the combine finished, as I was getting done talking with him, I went up to a lot of guys, a lot of guys on my team. And I was like, Hey man, let me get your Instagram. Let me get your Instagram. Let me get your Instagram. And the reason why I did that and Josh, we spoke about this earlier is like, I'm going to need these guys someday in my life. I don't know when, I don't know when I'll run to them, but I know if I, if I, if I have your contact information, you know, if I'm in, if I'm in New Jersey one day, Hey bro, I'm in New Jersey. Um, what's good? Like, are you, are you, you guys have something going on? Like, can we train together? Maybe I go to a tryout there and I meet and I, and I run into him like little things like that. So that was really like the third day was really just networking. So just working my butt off to network with coaches and players and then the last coach I spoke to was um, the OKC Energy Assistant Coach. His name's like Coach Lee. Um, he's a really good guy. Um, and I just really just had a conversation. Excuse me, a conversation with him about my um, just my abilities. Like, what did you think? What can I improve on? Just getting feedback. And that was another like solid thing to do. And I'll be, and I was being realistic with myself, Josh. And I think that you know, since it's an open combine, even though the whole thing is like you know it's a professional combine, it is because there is professional coaches out there. But anybody can sign up for this camp. So you notice the drop between guys that are, all right, you play semi-pro, you play division one. Oh, I don't play anywhere. You know, you know what I'm saying? And I, and there are some guys like that, that were not the greatest players. And this is like another big piece of everything, Josh, as far as going to these kinds of combines is like, if you know, you aren't, you know, at that level and you want to go play for a USL championship team or a division one team in a different country, like, you have to be realistic with yourself. And 
I was realistic with myself, Josh. I knew that I knew that I'm not ready to play at a USL level just yet. So I just wanted to go there to just network, meet coaches, and get feedback from play, from players and coaches. Like, hey, what can I do to improve? And so having that conversation with uh, Coach Lee from OKC Energy was uh, really valuable for me because I got to, you know, hear things. I, I had him, you know, give me feedback on things that I, I didn't see in my game. So that was a lot of value given. And even though you pay a certain fee to go and you have to pay for your hotel and whatnot, that in itself, those conversations, that contact information that I got, all those guys' Instagrams that I got, all that is value. That, that's what I got out of it, right? And that, that is super important. And that's something that, you know, guys really need to understand if you want to go to these kinds of events. What are you going to get out of it? Because if you, if you don't get anything out of it, if you don't try to talk to these people, they're not going to come up to you unless, unless you're the best player there. And the likelihood of you being the best player there, I mean, if you're confident in yourself, I mean, hey, you know, go ahead. But it's tough, man. It's really tough. So I personally got a lot of value out of it because of what I did. And I'm going to repeat it just one more time, and then we can, we can continue the conversation. It's just, you know, network, not just with coaches, but players. You know, just do that, all right? And then ask questions. You know, ask, ask your coaches questions. Ask your teammates that you play with questions. Hey, where are you playing? Are you playing NPSL? Are you playing UPSL? Are you in college? Like, little things like that. So I would say those two things in itself are, are super valuable. Super, super valuable. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, thanks, Adia, for that comment. You're right. Um, you got to be able to adapt. Yeah, team needs, coach wants. That's key to being just a good overall teammate, player, coachable. It's always something you want to be. <clears throat> um, so after the combine, you said you did some networking, things like that. Um, did you stay in touch with some of the coaches or players, like emails? Did they give you feedback? Were there like, any sorts of evaluation? Or was it kind of like on your own? after the combine, like how'd that work? So the way that they do it is that they, um, they reach out to you through email, the company, Eric Soccer Tour. Uh, after two weeks of the combine, I actually ended up getting uh, one of the coaches uh, LinkedIn, uh, one of the coaches Twitter, and um, I just sent them DMs through there and uh, kept, kept in touch with them as far as, uh, you know, just honestly just keeping in touch and for future opportunities because as I mentioned earlier, I am uh, in the process of kind of like getting myself back into like that high level. So once I have like a good film, recent footage of uh, my highlights, I can then send those out and be like, hey, like this is a 2020, 21 season, MPSL, yada, 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 here, check it out, you know, whatever. So I, I did that, you know, just uh, getting those guys contact information. And then the AX Soccer Tour, as I said, they reach out back to you. And um, I got an email. So um, as I said earlier, I wasn't I wasn't expecting to get signed by any team or anything. So I knew that, you know, the likelihood of me getting signed is pretty low. And it's pretty low for everyone, to be honest with you. They, mm -hmm. Josh, this is something that, you know, I saw out there. Is like out of that combine, I think one or two guys got, got something. And there was like, I think, close to 100 guys there, like 80, 90, around there. So one one or two guys out of 80 people, 80, 90 people. So, I mean, you do the math, like it's a it's, it's tiny chance for you of you getting something. So... Um, I, I didn't get, you know, scouted by any team or anything, but as I said earlier, I got, I got a lot of value out of it. I, I keep in touch with guys now from Boston, New Jersey, all over the place. And yeah, that's what I got out of it, man. It was, it was, it was super valuable for me and getting a chance to play three days of like high competitive soccer, especially at a time like this right now, 11 v 11s. It's, um, it was, it was valuable. Yeah. And I don't think that's, you know, that's not really the talk we're having of whether it was a scam or worth it money wise or that but again i think regardless of those things like if you're going to the camp you've already made your decision you've already you've already paid for it get the most you can out of it you know have fun meet guys work your hardest meet the coaches put yourself out there because i mean really the worst thing can say is no you're not good enough or not now or we already have a spot and if they tell you that well they just saved you time and you can move on to a different coach different focus exactly i think a lot of those exactly. camps some people get caught up in, you know, oh, well, th this is a scam because only like two guys every camp out of 100 or 300 ever sign or do this. And it's like, well, really, they're just putting out there's a chance for you. And there's no, there shouldn't be a guarantee that you get signed from it because that would be ridiculous too. So you got to keep in mind, it's on me. I decide to go here. I decide to pay for this and show up. So might as well get the most I can, even if it's a little exactly. bit out of my comfort zone. Exactly. And I wanted to touch on something real quick for that people, people can understand. It's like, 
they're a business, you know, they're not, they're not your friend. They're not, Hey, we're going to uh, try to get you on this team. We're going to try to, you know, yada, yada, yada. You know, it's, it's a business and they, they are making, they're making great money off of these events. And that's because there's a market in uh, soccer players that are trying to play pro. There's this, um, I don't want to call it, I don't want to call it like, you know, a, a nice like, I don't know, like a Ponzi scheme, but, a lot of people have that, uh, like, that want of, like, I want to play pro. I want to mm -hmm. play pro. I want to play pro. It's, like, 21-year-olds, 22-year-olds, 25-year-olds, 18-year-olds, 16-year-olds. And that's fine. You know, yeah, you can have that. Mm, you can have that aspiration of wanting to play pro. That's fine. But as long as you have a balance in your life and you are able to go pursue the dream, then by all means, go. Go. Because, I mean, you're only, you're only going to be 18, 19, 20 once in your life. So you go. You, you go for it. And these companies know that know know these things so yes they do give you an opportunity but you know it, it's a business it's a business yeah. and that's all that's all i'll say on that part but you have to understand that you can't have any uh, hard feelings towards uh you getting rejected from them or whatever it is you just take what you can out of it and you go again you know maybe maybe next year around this time i'll go again and my experience this year is going to help me tremendously going into the next one because i've already experienced it. i've already met people i might run into the coach again you know and, and I don't know what's going to come out of that. Yeah, that is something I'm seeing, especially in America, growing more and more. More young players want to play pro, and they're not, which, you know, we should be moving away, to be honest, from the college system, because that's a big reason why we're not on the yeah, level hopefully. of Europe and stuff. But you're seeing more people do that, and then more companies are taking advantage of that opportunity. Like I said, it's a business, and, you know, I think that is a whole other discussion, too, whether it's worth it or not. And, I remember one the they have ID camps for college where I went to one and it was just this one school there and it, as far as like the coaches talking to me and giving me feedback or whatever I didn't really get any of that and I mm -hmm. met them and I'd been emailing them and it was frustrating that ways and you know I was in Colorado so it was rainy and thunder almost every day and then they didn't really have anything planned when that Jeez. happened so I just went to the dorms and it was frustrating. I could have been just really mad of like, oh, well, I just wasted my money. This is stupid and that. And, you know, I know, knew going into it, there's no guarantee. And after the combat, I'm like, okay, I can sit here and be bitter and think, you know, oh, great, that was pointless. Mm -hmm. Or I can think about, okay, well, I met some guys. I got another taste of what it's like to play college soccer. This was a D2. And, you know, well, now I don't have to waste my time keep emailing that school or whatever so even if you do feel like you got ripped off you got scammed or it just feels like oh well nothing came from that you never know if you made connections you never know where that'll go and at the end of the day no matter what it's an experience so that's something i feel like a lot of people need to keep in mind when you're especially when you're paying money to go and if it's an open <clears throat> combine camp whatever it is versus like an invite only or closed like you gotta know the open combines you can have, like you said, you can have people. Yeah, all there's over dude, the man. You can have some micro honest, man, players. You can have youth players that barely played club at all. Like, you don't know who's going to be there. What's funny about this combine, I had, like, a center mid. I think he was, like, 16 years old on my team. And, like, he was decent. He was good. Like, for a 16 year old, he was solid. But, I mean, kid was getting bullied, you know? Like, there's, like, 23-year-olds that are, like, mm -hmm. you know, the difference between a 23-year-old and a 16-year-old, I mean, hey, like – yeah that experience is just you know it, you said it man like you what you pay for is an experience and you cannot you cannot buy experience so if i if, if the ax soccer tour let's say doesn't make any more camps for whatever reason i can say hey i went to that combine and whatever you know i, I experienced that you cannot go experience that again because it doesn't exist anymore so there's value in just getting experience man that there's so much value in that and um, I'm going to say it again because it's, it's so like, I don't know. It's so cliche, but like what, what you do in preparation to go to like these kinds of events really, you know, really dictates whether or not you're going to perform or not. Cause if you're, if you want to go pro out of nowhere and go train for a month or two and expect to like perform, I mean, shh, good luck. You have to be playing on a team. You have to be training. You even even if you're not on your team, you need to be training. You need to go look for a private trainer. Look for somebody that has more experience than you to help you, to mentor you, to teach you how to get better. So th those are my like pieces of advice, man. Because like I haven't played on a team for a while now, but 
having a private trainer that like knows, you know, their stuff and is able to, um, you know, show me and I'm able to play, even though it's adult league, it's, it's something, you know, I, I get something out of it. I get 90 minutes. I get to play 11 v 11. It's, uh, it helps prepare me. So that's, um, that's kind of my, my advice as far as the whole combine, man. And I think real quick, I kind of wanted to break this down as far as like ages. Cause I think, um, there's a lot of value in that as well. So if you are anywhere between 16 to 18 years old, and you're still in high school, and you're about to get ready to go into college, and you're looking to, um, let's just say you want to play college soccer, but at the same time you want to try to go go ahead and go pro, or you just want to get experience at a combine like this, I myself, I, if you financially can do it, then, then go do it, because you're going to meet people. Um, I don't want to repeat myself, but you're going to get everything that I mentioned in that combine if you if you go with the mindset that I had of like, hey, I'm here to network, I'm here to learn. I'm not here to sign a pro contract tomorrow. I'm here to network and mm -hmm. learn so that's that for that age group 16 to 18 i, I recommend if you guys can uh, obviously pay for it and then um like 18 18 to whatever you know 18 to 30 years old um you just have to be realistic super 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 realistic with yourself and if you think that you know you're ready and you have the financial financial uh, stability to go do it and you're playing somewhere pretty well go Go, go and have fun. Go and express yourself. Go and meet these coaches. And I, I want to touch one more thing, Josh. And I think, you know, hopefully this helps you as well. I think that what they do, uh, they send you like a packet through email of like the itinerary and stuff, but they also show all the, all the teams that are going to be there. But they don't include the coaches um, into information, like content information. Mm -hmm. So what I did the night before, Josh, is that I looked up every team and I looked up their coaches. And I literally like went on YouTube and typed in the coach's name. And searched, and I was like, "All right, how can I start a conversation with this guy tomorrow? Maybe um, he's uh, he played for so and so team back in the day. I can say, hey, hey, coach, um, you know, I I read your bio on your on your on on the website, and I saw that you played at yada yada's team. How was that? You know, that in itself goes to show that hey, this guy is doing the research. He's spending time investing into this event. That's going to bring more value than somebody else that comes to the event and says, hey." Um, I'm Josh Newland. Nice to meet you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause, yeah. cause, yeah. cause it shows that you're, you're not, you're just here for the event. You didn't, you didn't really invest that time. But if I go, Hey, Hey coach, nice to meet you. Uh, I saw that you played on, um, you know, whatever team, the New York Cosmos back in 2005. Um, you know, how was it being coached under whatever the coach's name, you know, little things like that. Yeah. I think that's a great point. I was just going to make that point too. Um, Again, everyone's in the, everyone's different, you know, as far as how affordable these camps are for you. I think beforehand, you should do your research, look up other people's, you know, reviews of these camps, what they said about their experiences, and also weigh in for you. Are you ready, like you said, um, playing-wise, skill-wise? Are you ready mentally? Can you afford it? Would it be worth your money and time? And then also, depending on your age, depending on your level, come in knowing and don't even though know, really no matter who you are your expectation shouldn't be okay at this camp i'm going to get a, a contract you, you want to go in with that positivity <clears throat> of course and have that as your mindset your end goal but especially depend on your level and your age and your experience <clears throat> you know be be realistic and go into that a bit more humble and just i'm going to meet everyone i can take advantage of every chance and then see what happens instead of you know, I got to get a contract. This is how I'm going to, you know, yeah, no. be a little realistic. You have to be realistic. And then, like you said, with reaching out, um, I'm sure at Pro Soccer Combines, it's different. And like you said, you didn't know exactly the contact information because they don't want to put that out there to everyone. But pretty much all this, the college camps I've heard of, especially email the coaches before. And especially if there are already teams you're interested in, you should already be in contact with them, the schools and the coaches. But especially when you're going to a camp, don't just show up like a lot of the other players will out of nowhere because you want it, you want them to be expecting you. You know, say, hey, coach, I'm going to this camp. I'm looking forward to meeting you. You know, I'm looking forward to playing in front of you, something along those lines. So then they have your, your name, you know, hopefully a picture of you, your highlights you sent them, and they have this picture already. <clears throat> and then you come to that camp, and you could perform even better than your highlights or your game film that you sent them or they at least are already looking for you. Whereas all the other players there are just a bunch of random names and people. And then when yeah. you're there, especially when you're there, most importantly, <clears throat> introduce yourself, 
And then afterwards, you know, hopefully you can get their contact information and afterwards send a follow up. Like <clears throat> you got to keep in touch. You got to do everything you can to set yourself apart. Cause like you said, even when you're actually meeting them, if you just say, Oh, I'm Josh and I'm here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and a lot of players are going to do that. That alone will separate you from some guys, but still that go above and beyond. I remember um, I met this coach D2 in Colorado. It wasn't the same one I went to a camp at. And um, I actually didn't do the research, to be honest. My dad was, like, looking up this stuff about him. And then he was That's talking good. about how he, he, played, he played at Yale. He's an All-American, stuff like this. And then when I was talking yeah. to him, I was, like, asking him about that. And he had the biggest smile on his face, like, wow, you really did your research. And, you know, that's just yeah. something that's going to set you apart from, you know, everyone else where the guys are just like, oh, what's up, coach? Here's all about me. Whereas if you go up to them, tell them, oh, this, I saw you coach for this team. You played for this team. Like, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So do whatever you can to set yourself apart. It <laughs> might be weird. Like, I don't want to say you're stalking those people. Yeah. But in a way, you kind of are. But you're doing it for the like the better good of not only yourself but to come off as like i'm not here just for me i'm here to like get to know you as well like you know these guys are human beings they're not just coaches that are just trying to sign guys like yeah. they have emotions they they like to laugh they like to have conversations they like you know interact with humans like that's 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 natural so if you're able to do those little things man and, and the perfect example there josh like it's value, you know, it, it's um, super valuable that you said that because I, I can't remember the last time that's happened to me, but um, like I've done it and I haven't had the coach smile like, oh, like, uh, you know, I see you, I see you. But um, I mean, the one thing that I asked was like, for instance, like the OKC energy coach I asked him like, you know, what's the rivalry like between you guys and FC Tulsa? Like I've seen, um, I've seen videos of the games and, you know, they look, they look really good and like, he had a conversation about it. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like, uh, oh, like, you know, that's pretty cool. You know, it was just like, he told me what, what, what's it about and, you know, how it is and whatever. But, I, again, I asked him a question that maybe most guys, maybe they wouldn't or they would. But, again, it's, it's just the same with yourself. Yeah, and with that coach, like, nothing came out of that. I, You know, they weren't really interested in me after that. But he gave me some great advice. We just had a nice conversation. And, again, just in general, I was like, oh, these college soccer coaches aren't just guys that are, you know, always mad and serious all the time and watching your every move, you know, like <laughs> they're real people, you know, and they, even if they aren't that interested in you and he barely knew me at all, but he was willing to have a conversation with me, you know, it was, it was yeah. a good experience. Exactly, man. That's a good. Oh, sorry. You got to answer those questions. Yeah, I was going to say, we got about five minutes left. Um, all right, perfect, perfect. International student play college soccer in the U.S., yeah, absolutely, and especially nowadays, it's coming more and more international players. Um, on my YouTube channel, I've talked to, do an interview just like this with a guy from Scotland that's playing D2 now, and um, a lot of it is you got to put yourself out there, just like you would if you were from America. You got to email them, send them your highlights, send them game film, stats, whatever you can, because unless you're rich, it's going to be hard to come over here and play in person in front of them. So even more so than you should already, if you live here, it's on you. Reach out to them. If you can, try to come over here and play in front of them. If not, you've got to have those highlights, stats, impress them through your emails. Um, if you want to answer the what happens after a tryout and what can happen, you got that. Yeah. Uh, so what's actually pretty cool about this trial that I went to, I actually kind of knew the guy that ended up getting signed at the Combine. So he got a trial. I think he got a trial with um, ND11. I don't know if you've ever heard of that team. Mm -hmm. ND11 and OK, OKC Energy. He got a combine with that. So he, um, yeah, I mean, that, that was pretty cool. You know, this guy got it. Like, he actually got, like, offered to go on trial with them. So um, that's, that's, like, you know, that's huge. You, know, you go from, you go from, I, I think he was playing MPSL and, and Sarasota. I don't know if you know where that's at, Sarasota, Florida. He was playing MPSL in Sarasota, Florida, and going from MPSL to USL Championship with, like, two great teams. So, I mean, the opportunity is there, guys. But you really have to be, like, you have to be solid. You have to be ready. You have to – that guy was, like – that guy was all speed, Josh. This guy was, like, you know, but, like, every time he got the ball, just poke it and run. It just, he was super skillful, super quick. So, he is someone that's at that level. He's ready to push on and go to that next level. So, um, as far as what can happen – you know, that, that, that can happen to you. You can go from playing 
at a MPSL team to a USL championship team, which is each is a great, you know, it's a great way. My bad. My bad. We're good. So it's, it's a great way for you to, uh, you know, again, these opportunities are there, but you just have to take them and, and really just really, you, you have to be like the 1%. You have to be the 1%. And you also have to be what they're looking for, Josh. We didn't talk about mm -hmm. that. So if we're looking for a left back and you're a right winger and you balled out, I mean, it doesn't really matter because, I mean, we're, we have our right wingers. We don't we don't need a right mm -hmm. winger right now. So it's also about – and I think you've heard this multiple times. It's like everything has to align for everything to work out for you. So it's really just about, all right, can I go to this event? Didn't work out. All right, I'll come back to another event. I'll, go, I'll come back next year. Or I'll go, I'll go try out for different teams in MPSL, UPSL. And, and again, just slowly, 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 just try to work my way up to, um, to get to where I am. So just be patient with it. And um, I guarantee you if you, keep, if you keep working and you stay, you stay humble, good things will come out of these events for you. Yeah, that's exactly right. So thank you guys all for tuning in, for listening, and for all your questions. Glad we can answer them for you. And hopefully, you know, this provided you with some good information. Um, you know, I wanted to bring Jonathan on because this isn't something, you know, I've never been to a pro soccer combine yet and hope that you guys got some good information. Like I said, this isn't about, you know, is this one a scam or is this worth it? Like we're just talking about experience, experience. best advice, experience. what it was like. So, um, yeah, thank you for, thank you for joining me, Jonathan. Really appreciate it. Oh, bro. It. Thank you, man. Thank you. Before we end it, man, just, um, let me recommend some to everybody that's watching because I have it in my hand, man. <laughs> I didn't eat dinner yet. So real quick, um, if you guys are trying to, you know, up that nutrition game and try to eat something healthy, uh, these bad boys right here, guys, I, I eat them not all the day, all the time, but they're really good uh, granola for your cereal, for yogurt, whatever it is, really healthy. So um, that's Elizabeth. I can't remember the brand, but you guys can uh, check in my page if you guys want to see uh, more nutrition because that's kind of what I, what I like to do research on. So um, thank you, Josh, bro. I appreciate you uh, for doing this, man. All right, yeah, really appreciate you joining. We'll stay in touch. Yeah. We'll probably collab again in the future. So of course, of course, of course. Stay tuned for that, guys. Thank you all. Have a good night. Take care, guys. Have a great night. Peace. All right, see you, Josh. Later.